so I'm Rebecca Keynes. I am the director of the Regina Improvisation Studies Centre at the University of Regina. And I had worked with Creative City Centre on a partnership and I've been trying to think of ways that we could build a project together that worked with what we were doing, which is exploring improvisation and with what Creative City Centre does so well, which is supporting mentoring artists. So we got together and threw around some ideas. We had some ideas about uh, building uh, exhibitions, all sorts of things, and eventually came up with this project, Liquid Arts, um, exploring improvised painting in communities. My name is Marian Donnelly. I am with the Creative City Center in Regina, and the Creative City Center was one of the uh, community partners in the Liquid Art Project. So we um, held most of the meetings uh, at our venue, and um, I helped to, you know, find the artists who were participating in the project. And then we also helped to connect with the high schools uh, where the artists were going to do their workshops. Um, and then at the end of the project, uh, we hosted an exhibition of all of the artwork that was created by the students in our gallery at the Creative City Center. So that was kind of the role that we played. My name is Gina Dunbar and the role that I played in Liquid Art was, was one of the mentees to the mentors and I was trained to do uh, workshops and collaborations. My name is Larissa Kichimonia. I am a painter. Um, what else do I do? I do a lot of things. I do, I do a lot of other art related things. My part in the project was to facilitate a workshop based around creating portraits out of plaster scene. Okay. My name is Adam Martin. At, I am executive director of Segei Walk First Nations Artist Collective. And my role in the Liquid Arts Project was um, as a partner in the community, helping to find artists working in a uh, more spontaneous sort of way. I mean, what yeah. we realized really quickly is that the, the image of liquid art was about art um, falling through from the top where the people are very established artists through to uh, kids who are just starting to work with practice um, and then back again. So this kind of image of art moving through the community and um, and what we wanted to make sure is that artists were being supported at all of those stages. So we looked at whether we could help uh, emerging artists get support from established artists that would help them kind of professionalize, think about what they wanted to do in their careers, learn some of the techniques of working in workshops, which is something not a lot of artists have done. And then if they could then share what they knew about art with kids in school. Um, and then through that, we could really look at this kind of flowing of ideas, of creativity, of knowledge from um, established artists through to kids and back again. And we wanted the community to be part of that, so that's why we brought in um, uh, elder knowledge and community knowledge as well, because we wanted it to not just be about art that was flowing through the community, but also about ideas of support of creativity and culture. Yeah, so the mentors, um, Josh and Lionel, um, Josh seemed like a an appropriate one because Gina had worked with him, I think, and, and knew him very well. And I, I was familiar with his work in the community as doing the, the mural work that he's done. And then Lionel, um, he's he's a, just a very knowledgeable source for uh, Cree culture and tradition, as well as being an artist. So, and he profess he's a professor at the First Nations University, and I worked with him. And I think that was kind of the, the agreement in his collaboration that there would be there there would be a, a one mentor. From the indigenous community and other from from uh, from the community as well, uh, working together to to get these artists motivated and working together. Well, mentorship is always a big uh, part of any project when you're um, dealing with uh, you know artists who are either emerging or at the earlier stages of their career and and uh, you know approaching them to do workshops in high schools or do something that's out of their comfort zone. It's so helpful to have somebody who's done it before or, um, you know, who's had experience in that realm to, to just be there as a sounding board for them to shoot ideas off of. 
you know, because there's a lot of things that you, you don't learn in school. You know, there's a lot of things you don't learn at university when you're getting your degree in, in fine arts. Uh, and how to do workshops in high schools is one of those things. The mentorship portion of the project was really important, I think, because it allowed us to talk to artists with more experience than we did, right? Because I've never done really a lot of working with students or kind of like that kind of public engagement, I guess, because I think I have a lot of tendency to be really um, private about what I paint and do art. So that was really interesting to have somebody's perspective on how to go about it, really. Uh, the experience I had with Josh and Lionel were really positive. It was really interesting to learn about like how you'd write a proper artist resume, how you would go out and prepare your like portfolio, your your the way you'd run a workshop, how you'd line it up and what kind of steps you'd take, even when it came down to experience with doing your taxes as an artist or um, looking for funding, writing grants, stuff like that, that you wouldn't, if you didn't, if someone didn't teach you, you wouldn't know. I guess uh, Liquid Art brought in Joseph to come in and talk to me and uh, Larissa a little bit and it was nice to have an, an elder come in and talk about uh, collaborations and projects as an Aboriginal artist coming in and and having a career in Canada as one uh, and it was nice to get in touch with my roots a bit more because I don't really know a lot about my father's side of the family so it's nice to be connected like that and and bring also that into my 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 art and taking larissa and gina into the schools and helping them to imagine how they can teach a bunch of kids a workshop was kind of amazing and seeing them think about what they were as artists and how they could break that down and share that with people what was unique to what they did you know and I mentored them as well as a community engaged artist about what it, the difference is between being an artist and being a school teacher and they got to bring in what it's like to be an artist to these kids who just really hadn't had access to that before and the teachers became part of the mentoring as well so they were mentoring their students in the classroom with the with the young artists and that was pretty exciting. Working with students was interesting. I think I had worked with students before, but they were younger. So that was like, you went in and they were excited to be there and everybody was really excited and interested in what you were doing. And this was more teenagers and they were like, eh, I don't know if I like you. So then we had to like, be the enthusiasm that they didn't necessarily bring because they were too You know what I mean? So, um, it was good though. Like, it's always interesting seeing people at the beginning stages of their creative lives, right? And I had a really great um, teacher in another project that I did, and she had told me that it's just one student that you need to inspire. One person that is going to walk away from this and be like, yes, I want to do art. And so that was really important for me to keep that in mind. I think everybody thought I was crazy because it was plaster scene art. So it was just like, oh my God, this is not, no. And then I think they liked it though. I think overall it was positive. With working with students in the different schools, I've had some experience. I work with kids quite a bit, but I've never worked. It was more with like projects with like festivals and stuff. So when I was actually in a classroom setting, it was a little different for each type of age group. Overall though, the feedback was really good. They, a lot of them, with my type of workshop, they got to have free range. So it made it really easy for them to come in and do what they want without so much structure, but still having the same like creative outcome. Um, with the, when it came to the workshops, I did uh, found art or mixed media art. Some people call it folk art or trash art, where I found different people in the community to donate all the stuff that they didn't want anymore, such as um, broken pieces of jewelry, um, old frames, old fabric, and then I'd bring so everything but the paint and paintbrush to these workshops and get them to challenge themselves to cha change someone else's garbage into pieces of art. It's not that common here, so how they responded was pretty funny at first. Some of them didn't really understand, but then once I showed them slides from around the world with 
with full murals done by recycled car parts or uh, different types of uh, shrines that use all upcycled, like all recycled and upcycled items. They kind of got the gist of it and then they were able to use their imagination and create their own little sceneries or their own shrines or their own pieces. I mean, I, th I think that having uh, these artists, Gina and Larissa, going into the high schools, I think it has impact on both uh, the, st the students in the schools as well as on Gina and Larissa, right? So the impact, I mean, I, I saw it, you know, in the school kids that came for the exhibition, you know, they, um, they were so thrilled to have a show that was happening outside of their school. They were so thrilled to actually be in a professional gallery and see their work on the walls and be able to explain to their, you know, parent or whoever they brought with them, you know, hey, this is my work, I did this. And then the other, the flip side of it was the impact that it had on, on Gina and Larissa. Like, I know that both of them grew in self-confidence from having that experience not just as um, artists, but as people too, right? You know, like that was their first time of getting in front of a group of students and having to share what they know about things. Um, so for me, improvisation existed in the way that Gina gathered her found materials. It existed in the way that Larissa tried to find new artists that would inspire the young people. And it certainly existed in the live events when we saw them painting and responding, and particularly at the museum where the artists were collecting ideas from the audience and then incorporating them into these ongoing paintings. That was really exciting because to me I saw this kind of collaborative real-time decision making but in a really beautiful community engaged way that was very specific to these artists and what they do. So one of the projects was we went to the Royal Museum and they had a conference going on and people would come out and they would leave inspiration that they'd taken away from the conference or just like little doodles of whatever they had taken away from it and yeah. we were tasked with reading these little pieces of paper and trying to incorporate our paintings into them. Yeah. Um, I think it was really successful. Like, I think improvisation comes into play anytime you do any kind of art. So with the project it was kind of like we didn't 100% know exactly what we were going to, especially with the live art ex like projects. We just kind of like went for it and we kind of just showed up the day of and we are kind of placed into these scenarios where we didn't know 100% what we were doing. <laughs> um, anything that gets, anything that really turns, um, you know, the usual format on its head, right? So something like a conference, no one's going to really come in and expect. It's kind of a happy bonus, right? You, you can, where you can see these people from the community working in response to what's happening. So they're not, you know, okay, we're going to sit around for the next few hours. Uh, oh, but what are these people doing over here? And, and, and actually see that the work that, that is going on has a greater, a greater reach for everyone. And I think the artists can communicate that. <laughs> I think the most challenging part was the time. There was not a lot of time because most time when you make art, you can always go back to it. But this was like, we only had two hours and we had to to the point and then be gone, right? So. It's challenge. Improvising is challenging. It's uh, it's definitely thought provoking, and it gets people to get out of their their comfort zone. And it also, I feel like, it socializes people really well. And you get to when you get to create with friends, it forms a stronger bond. And if you get to do it in a classroom setting, that classroom see those kids see each other every day, so they get to share those moments, and now they get to share something they create, and it's it's a good, pretty good feeling. <laughs> very rewarding and and it helped shape me who I am today as an artist for sure um I think the ending exhibition was a really good experience for a lot of people because even as like a an art student in university you don't necessarily always get that opportunity to be a part of an opening so it was like really important to have them experience that scenario and to go through it and to know exactly like what it means to be an artist so that was important. I would like to do it again um, 
It was interesting. Like uh, so Walk is a multidisciplinary organization, so we're always trying to find ways to make everyone happy in, in their specific genres, but also uh, collaborations that bring indigenous artists, culture, and knowledge to um, a partner organization in the community. Anything like that, it, and and especially this one where it was interacting with uh, components in the community. Um, also, you know, there was a concert at the U of R. Uh, yeah, I think it helps to break down a lot of barriers. It's an educational thing. And I think it was just a, a really good thing that I would like to see again. Yeah, no, I just think that the, the whole concept of, of merging um, artists at an earlier stage of their career with senior artists uh, to create something that then has an impact on the next generation of artists, you know, the high school students, I just think that that's... Really, it's it's been a gift to be involved in the project, and and I really hope that that other organizations will see the benefits of, of doing stuff like this and and think, hey, yeah, we should do that. Whether it's you know spoken word or uh, you know uh, literary arts or dance or whatever it might be. I mean, this this is a it's it's really a fantastic opportunity for everybody that gets involved. I think it's really fantastic the International Institute for Critical Studies and Improvisation will fund uh, exhibitions through its research money. I think that's a, a really novel way to think about how we get research that's practice based out to the community. Uh, and this project for me as a researcher has been about exploring how can practice based research methods really um, reach different parts of the community through knowledge uh, that looks like different kinds of knowledge. And one of the things I spoke about with a researcher at the university is how the canvases themselves are research objects. And the idea that we might take that canvas or an image of that canvas to a policy conversation or to a conversation where we're thinking through theory is a really beautiful contribution. Um, and so I think it's a really important part of research that we continue to make performances and exhibitions uh, part of our research outcomes. And so I think it, I'd like to thank International Institute for Critical Studies and Improvisation for funding this, um, this liquid art project.